Hello, I'm Richard Treves, Outreach Officer for the School of Geography at Southampton University in the UK. In these clips that follow, I'm going to talk to you about the principles of climate change. In this clip, we'll be answering the question, is the Earth a superorganism? Before we can get on to answering the question, we need to understand what positive and negative feedback mean. If you push the tape inside the mug in the picture, the, the tape will roll a bit but move back into the centre of the mug. And that's known as negative feedback because the tape resists what you're trying to do to it. If alternatively you put the tape on top of the mug and give it a push, it will roll and keep on rolling and accelerate off. And that's known as positive feedback because it just accentuates what you've just done to it. So let's look at an example of positive feedback in the Earth's climate. What we're going to do is fly over from North America there, up over the top of Alaska, and fly in to the North Pole. What you can see on screen is the white represents the sea ice floating on the sea at the North Pole, and the pink line represents the average extent of the ice cap over 30 years from present back to 1980. So if we press play now, it's going to move forward from 1989, which it is at the moment, to 1999 to play again. Now we have a real change because we're going to pause again at July 2007. And what you can see is the ice has retreated massively from the average extent back way north. And it's revealed this big patch of dark blue sea. And what happens is that absorbs sunlight much more than the white ice. So the water subsequently heats up. And as it heats up, obviously it melts the ice more. So that's a positive feedback situation. So now we're going to look at negative feedback in a climatic situation. And we're going to look at carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and forest expansion. And what happens is if we have a tropical forest like we have here in South America, let me just play you a little bit of a video of someone walking through exactly such a tropical forest there. Okay, you get the idea of where we are and what we're talking about. If the carbon dioxide increases, then trees find it easier to grow because trees breathe carbon dioxide in the same way that we breathe oxygen. So what happens is they extend their area outside into areas where they didn't live before and also within the forest that they occupy already, there'll be more trees per square kilometre. So effectively, if carbon dioxide increases, more trees grow and they capture the carbon dioxide. And if the carbon dioxide decreases, then less trees grow and they release carbon dioxide when they die. So we've got negative feedback uh, in this system here. What we're going to do now is I'm going to fly you into the top right corner of this frame and we're going to have a question. And the question is, do clouds have a positive or negative feedback effect on the Earth's climate? And the answer is both at the same time. Clouds tend to block the sun, which gives us negative feedback, but they also tend to warm the earth. It's a greenhouse gas, water vapour is a greenhouse gas, so it gives you positive feedback. And that's the effect that clear nights tend to be frosty in winter. So the last thing we're going to discuss is what's known as homeostasis. And that means that living things like to stay in the same state. So you like to stay at a constant temperature. 
if you get too hot, your body will sweat and that tends to cool you down. If you get too cold, your body will shiver and that uses energy in your muscles to warm you up. So just like the tape in the mug, uh, life is a negative feedback system and it likes to stay in the same state, which is known as homeostasis. So returning to our original question, is the Earth a superorganism? Let's look at arguments for the idea. It may surprise you to learn that not all the cells in your body are human cells. Lots of bacteria that you need to survive. There's about a thousand different species in your gut alone. And because they're really small, the number of bacteria cells outnumber your own cells 10 to 1. If you're eating at the moment, I hope that idea hasn't put you off your food. We are walking ecosystems. Welcome to the idea of Planet U. Another point is that Earth has negative feedback loops, like the trees and carbon dioxide system we looked at. And negative feedback is a characteristic of homeostasis. But there are arguments against. Earth also has positive feedback loops, like the ice and sun system. That's less like homeostasis. Also, Earth doesn't reproduce, well, as far as we know. So overall, I'd say it isn't clear if our planet is a superorganism or not. But what is clear is that Earth's climate is made up of lots of systems, and the key to avoiding climate change is to understand those systems. So a final point about systems. If you make a little paper spring, as I've done here on the left, folded up in a concertina fashion, it's a system. And if you push it gently, it will actually push back very gently. If you pull it equally, it will exert a tiny force pulling away from you. Is that a positive or a negative feedback system? And by now you should realize that it's negative, it just resists whatever you try and do to it. The point about this is if you pull it too much, the paper will rip and the system is broken. So remembering homeostasis in humans, let's go for another question. If ripping the paper breaks the folded paper system, what would be the equivalent if we broke the human sweating, shivering homeostasis system? The answer is, the human would die. If you were dropped in the Sahara midday in summer with no shelter, you'd sweat for a while, but your body would be overwhelmed with heat and you'd die. Once dead, a body can't regulate its own temperature. In a similar manner, negative feedback systems like the forest carbon dioxide system may be re regulating carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere. But if we stress them too much, just like you in the desert, they become overwhelmed. They reach a tipping point at which they break and no longer operate as a system anymore. So if this happens, Earth will get a new climate with extreme weather like droughts, hurricanes and floods. Sea level will rise, which will flood places like Bangladesh, low-lying tropical islands and the Norfolk Broads. Access more detail by opening this link and looking in the bottom left corner of the frames.